What's happening, all? Johnny Ruckus here. Let me talk about the Metal Zone today. Uh, gets a lot of hate. I was one of those haters, and then I wanted one, and I got one from my buddy Josh. This was before the snow was flying, but it took a while. But here we are. I'm just going to learn how to use this thing. I figured it'd be fun to uh, film it, and maybe we can learn something together. And maybe if you hate it, you won't hate it as much. Or maybe you might hate it more. <laughs> or you'll just go, yeah, I hate it regardless, you dummy. Could be the case. But I got my metal zone here. It's upside down. But it, that's all right. So what you heard in the intro part was everything at noon. Well, that was... All right. I'm just going to go through the controls real quick. They are super finicky. So this is the level. No level. Noon. 75. All the way. All right, back to noon. This is the low control. Off. About noon, three o'clock, all the way. Now I'm losing there. High, off. Sweep it up. About noon. Oh, all the way. All right, let's get that out of there. Mid, off. Starts at 200, goes to 5K. So let's turn the mid frequency down. It's 200. Noon. All the way. All right, now the gain. That's no gain. It's like a crunch with no gain. Okay, let's get everything back to noon. The controls on this thing are so fr finicky that you don't have to make a lot of adjustments you, from noon, really. So I'm going to dial the mid back. I'm going to keep the mid frequency control about noon. I'm going to dial the mid back to maybe about 11. So right now I have the high and the low at about 1, mid at about 11, the distortion and the level. Get a little bit more juice, but the gain. Thank you. 
Yeah, so to get it sounding halfway decent, you don't have to do much much to it. Um, much like the DS1 where you don't turn the tone control up, I would say don't crank anything on here because it's overboard everywhere. Highs. Back about one o'clock. So now that I've ran through the uh, EQs and the, all that stuff, I think it gets a lot of unwarranted hate, but at the same time, it's warranted because you can make this thing sound really horrible very quickly, and it's fun to make it do that and then talk shit about it. I did that too, so... I think there's usefulness for this thing, but I don't think it's live. I know you can do it live, but I think you would probably have to have like another EQ to dial. By the time you you get it to where it sounds kind of decent by itself, there's still like a high-end fizziness to it, and not everybody likes that. So you'd probably get an EQ pedal to dial some of that out and really shape the tone. Because the EQ section is you're you're getting way more than it needs to. So if the EQ section didn't have such a sweep, it would probably be a lot better. Now I don't know what they did with the Wazzle craft one. Maybe they did some of that. I'm not sure. But in this one, <laughs> as you heard. Real touchy, real quick, and you can make it sound just freaking terrible. So I think the usefulness ends up coming in the studio sound or, you know, where you like double track, like maybe the second track, I think it would fill in some of those frequency gaps of, uh, of the like the main track. I think that's where it would lie. Um, I've done a little bit of this and that kind of seems to, to, to work that way. So that's where I think the best use of this thing would be studio second track, you know, second track, third track, somewhere in there where you're layering guitars. I think that would help you just fill in the gaps. I think that's where it lies. So. I've been Johnny. That thing's been the metal zone. And yeah, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And that's up to you. Yeah.